You wouldn't expect a country that has been under war for decades to be so developed, right? But Afghanistan is defying all odds and is on a path to build itself as a great nation with unbelievable mega projects that even Dubai and Saudi Arabia haven't done. In this video, we'll show you how a country that has been under havoc and poverty for so long is now standing up on its feet with no foreign aid. See how Afghanistan is making Asia's largest artificial river in its arid desert. Before we see how Afghanistan is managing to build this marvel, let's give some credit to the nation's resistance against its torn past that has again and again destroyed Afghanistan's economy and infrastructure. It all started in 1979 with the Soviet Union's invasion. This decade-long conflict had serious consequences. It not only devastated the country's infrastructure and social fabric, but also gave rise to various Mujahideen groups who fiercely resisted the Soviet occupation. The United States and other countries supported these groups, viewing it as a Cold War battleground against Soviet expansion. The Soviet withdrawal in 1989 left a power vacuum, leading to a brutal civil war. Different factions of the Mujahideen fought for control, plunging the country into chaos. And then I'm sure you are all aware of what the Taliban did. It was in this situation that the Taliban, a group of Islamic fundamentalists, emerged. By 1996, they had seized Kabul, imposing a strict version of Sharia law and gaining power for their harsh governance and human rights abuses. The turning point came with the tragic events of September 11, 2001. The Taliban's refusal to hand over Osama bin Laden, the mastermind behind the attacks and leader of Al-Qaeda, was harbored in Afghanistan. This led to the US invasion of the country, which made it a surreal battleground. The US army initially toppled the Taliban regime, but what followed was a prolonged and complex conflict that lasted two decades. The US-led war in Afghanistan, aimed at dismantling Al-Qaeda and removing the Taliban from power, had far-reaching consequences. Despite initial successes, the mission became mired in challenges. The Taliban regrouped and launched an insurgency, leading to a protracted conflict that claimed thousands of lives, including civilians and displaced millions. Over the years, the Taliban regained strength, controlling significant territories. Eventually, the US withdrew its troops in 2021, which saw a swift and dramatic takeover of the country by the Taliban. Now, after this takeover, political experts and economists have an ongoing debate on whether this Taliban-led government will leave Afghanistan in ruins and pieces or will it be the rise of this country. None of us can be sure of this now, but the country has shown some dramatic positive results, especially compared to its neighboring third world countries. It's safe to say that the Afghani people do want to make a change in their nation's growth and they are contributing to it. But before we go too far in commending their efforts, let's get back to our main topic of the Koch Tepa Canal, which is set to be a marvel in Afghanistan. So, what's cooking in Afghanistan's barren desert? Afghanistan launched a mega project named Koch Tepa Canal in the middle of their desert. Koch Tepa Canal is a colossal project that is near completion in Afghanistan. It stretches 285 kilometers long, 152 meters wide, and 8.5 meters deep. The canal is said to be one of the world's largest irrigation canals. Originating from the Amu Darya River and traversing the provinces of Balkh, Jauzan, and Faryab, this artificial river is going to be a symbol of Afghanistan's engineering prowess. Why is it so hyped up? Simply because nobody expected Afghanistan to be so quick on the road to its recovery after war. It is a monumental effort to convert 550,000 hectares of desert into fertile farmland. The canal's route is strategically planned to maximize agricultural benefits. Initiated in early 2022 by the Taliban-run government, the canal's construction has been a priority. By February 2023, over 100 kilometers had been excavated, with Planet Labs images documenting this progress. Then the completion of the first phase in October 2023 marked a significant milestone, leading to the immediate commencement of the second phase. It is unbelievable how the country is building this project so rapidly and where they are getting the resources and money to make it possible. What makes it even more remarkable is the self-reliance of Afghani Patans. Patans are known for their stubbornness, tribal loyalty, and bravery. These famous characteristics of Afghani Patans can be seen in the success of the Koch Tepa Canal as the project is carried out without foreign aid or external engineering advice. So, why embark on such a massive project? The answer lies in Afghanistan's urgent need to address water and food shortages. With the construction of this canal, they are focusing on irrigating grains and wheat. By 2028, Afghanistan envisions becoming a wheat exporter, a significant move towards self-sufficiency. But how is such an ambitious project being realized? 
The primary source of funding for the Koch Tepa Canal comes from the Afghan government itself. The project is considered a priority by the Taliban-run government and they have allocated a substantial portion of their budget to this initiative. This government funding is primarily derived from domestic revenue sources, including taxes. Initial estimates put the cost of the canal at around $500 million. However, newer assessments have suggested that an additional $100 million may be needed, bringing the total projected cost to approximately $600 million. This indicates that the government is prepared to adjust its budget allocations as the project progresses and as needs arise. Funding a project of this magnitude solely from domestic sources is challenging, especially for a country like Afghanistan, which has faced economic hardships and instability. No doubt the sustainability of funding throughout the project's phases will be crucial for its completion and success. However, this project is not as simple or good for the country as it may seem now. The journey of building the Koch Tapa Canal is filled with challenges and triumphs. Imagine 7,000 workers, including engineers and drivers, toiling in harsh desert conditions using equipment some of which dates back to the 1960s. Yet, their progress is astounding. The first phase of the canal, involving the construction of 14 hydraulic gates and the digging of the canal itself, showcases the deep planning and hard work of the Afghan people. The canal's design cleverly avoids the need for expensive water lifts and ensures flood prevention, a critical aspect in such a massive project. The Koch Tapa Canal is also more than an engineering marvel. It's a catalyst for economic and environmental transformation. The project will provide water to over a million Afghans, reviving agriculture in a region that has become arid due to global warming and declining groundwater reservoirs. The canal is also expected to boost local economies, create employment opportunities, and improve living conditions for thousands of residents. However, despite the progress, independent experts and engineers have raised concerns. The Afghan government's approach, deemed basic by some, lacks oversight and advanced construction methods. In other words, they are skeptical about the benefits and consequences of this canal. The skepticism stems from the perceived absence of technical expertise and effective project management within the Afghan government. If you look at some of the political aspects of this project, there are some other concerns. The Amu River's water use regime established during the Soviet era did not account for Afghanistan's interests as the country was not a party to any regional or international treaty on using transboundary river waters. This absence of formal agreements and dispute resolution procedures has been a point of contention, especially since the canal's construction began. Uzbekistan, significantly affected as a downriver country, has voiced concerns over the potential adverse effects on its agriculture because the diversion of water from the Amu Darya for the canal could affect the water availability for downstream countries like Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. Talks held in 2023 between Uzbek officials and the Taliban have yet to yield official agreements, highlighting the diplomatic complexity surrounding the project. Moreover, environmental experts have expressed concerns that the Koch Tepa Canal could increase the Aral Sea crisis by diverting more water from the Amur River. A detailed analysis by CABAR.Asia pointed out the construction methods and predicted high water losses in the canal, underscoring the environmental risks associated with the project. The canal diverts water from the Amu Darya, a river that is a critical water source for the Aral Sea. The Aral Sea has already been experiencing significant shrinkage and ecological damage due to water diversion for agricultural purposes. The construction methods for the canal, described as rudimentary by some experts, raise concerns about water losses due to seepage and evaporation. If the canal is not built with adequate materials and engineering techniques, a significant amount of water could be lost, reducing the efficiency of the canal and potentially worsening water scarcity in the region. The construction and operation of the canal could lead to soil erosion, particularly if the banks of the canal are not properly reinforced. This could result in sedimentation, which can affect water quality and aquatic habitats downstream. Well, every mega project comes with its challenges and we cannot be sure if the project will be a hit or a total disaster. As we look towards the future, the Koch Tapa Canal represents both challenges and opportunities. The project's completion, slated for 2028, could be achieved earlier given the current pace of work. However, concerns from neighboring countries about water sharing and the canal's environmental impact cannot be overlooked. Afghanistan's commitment to not affect the share of water river for other countries is also very important to maintaining regional harmony. The Koch Tapa Canal is more than just an infrastructure project. It's a beacon of hope for Afghanistan, symbolizing its potential to overcome adversity and pave the way for a prosperous future. 
Afghanistan's journey in building Asia's largest artificial river in the desert is a story of inspiration and courage. It's a narrative that challenges perceptions and showcases the unyielding spirit of a nation. As this project progresses, it not only promises to transform the landscape, but also to reshape the destiny of a country and its people. Let's keep our thoughts positive and fingers crossed on this remarkable project's journey, for it's not just about building a canal, it's about building a future.